Welcome back, Fast Monty's Garage. Today we get to talk about valley pans, in particular, a tomahawk valley pan. Now, I have to apologize in advance. I have several links to share with you. What are you talking about, Mike? Well, for those of you who've been following along, my last video, I did an installation of a Butler Performance Pro oil pump. And now, all of a sudden, the engine's almost all together. The timing chain covers on, the water pump's installed, the camshaft's in, timed, the, the lifters are installed, everything's preloaded. What happens to all those steps? Well, I already filmed those in the prior rebuild. So go check out the start of that playlist where I start with the cam timing. Yeah, lots to show there. Now, the difference now is my valley pan. Back when I first built this engine, uh, valley pans were not designed to work with uh, roller lifters because they have that crossbar on top. You can see it here. There's a crossbar that interferes with the valley pan. So back then, I got one of these valley pans. So it's, it's just a bent piece of aluminum. It worked really well until I put a baffle on of my own for the PCV valve. So those of you that missed it or want to check out a really cool interview of me and the GTO, go check out Autotopia LA's interview of me where we actually had some driving footage and I was blowing smoke in between shifts. I didn't know I was blowing smoke. So I actually created another video where I troubleshooted that smoke issue. That smoke issue was because of a bad PCV plumbing job. Not done by me. I didn't catch it, but the PCV valve was actually plumbed to the number seven intake runner. I was sucking oil and blowing oil in between shifts. The other issue was that actual PCV location didn't have proper baffling. Oh man, so that's why we're at the Tomahawk because the Tomahawk looks like the original valley pan. But if you were to take an original valley pan and put it on your roller lifter conversion, it wouldn't fit. The bottom of it would interfere with those crossbars. Well, this one is designed to work with the roller lifters. Hooray! Now, back to the PCV issue is, I didn't have appropriate baffling, right? Look at this baffle. This is the opening. It has to go all the way over here to get through the PCV valve. The only way you're going to get oil in this PCV valve is if you're upside down and, and oil is going through the, the top of the engine. Now, second to that, which I will do another video of this later in the installation process, is getting a custom adjustable PCV valve. Look at that. That is made by M.E. Wagner. I am going to go through a detailed installation of this valve. But what that does for us, it gives us the flexibility to adjust the, how much vacuum is being consumed by your PCV system. Because standard PCV valves are frankly engineered for the standard engine. Most of us have upgraded our engines dramatically and PCV valves not designed for that. It does not operate um, as optimally as it should. So that's why the M.E. Wagner PCV valve is awesome. And I can't wait to install that. Again, I'll go through that later after we install the intake manifold. Different video, different installation series, but stay tuned for that. Now let's get into this little project here. We need to make sure this fits on the engine. Now, of course, there are fitness issues and I have it. We're going to test fit this one. I'm going to show you why we have to test fit it and how to fix it. Then we also have to paint it because you can leave this coated. Uh, it's a, um, I can't remember the coating on here, but it, it is a, a form of rust preventative. It will last a while. It will still corrode eventually, but you guys know me. Nothing stays standard. I'm going to paint it gloss black because I got other things going on that are gloss black and it's going to pop. That said, let's get a closer look and test fit this bad boy. All right, before we start monkeying around with putting our valley pin in and out, let's protect this painted surface. I just painted these heads again. So I'm going to put some uh, green tape down and protect that paint. Tape's laid down. And the reason I know I'm going to have an issue is they warn me that if you have the 87cc 
Edelbrock heads. This little lip on here is probably too big, and we're going to have to trim one of these sides or both these sides to get it to fit. So let's give it a shot. As predicted, there are certain sides, like you can see this, this raises up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and mark some areas with a pen and then shave it down with my flap disc grinder. Wipe it all off, make sure it's clean. Remember, we still have an exposed area for the engine. We don't want to get dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and get to work on that. And we'll be right back. So here's my guidance. So I went ahead and put my fasteners in. So we now have the pan lined up along the axis of the engine. And we can see where we're off. So I ground some here. And you can see, I don't know, it's tough to see, but I can see the edge of the head right here. That little lip we talked about. And then right here crosses over. It goes above the lip and then back down on the tail over here. So just take your straight edge. And now you can see where you need to trim. So tough to see in the video, but there is marker. I'm going to go ahead and put a vertical line because I have my previous marked edge. So let's call it right here. So I still have to shave a sixteenth of an inch off on this side. So I'll go ahead and look at the other side, do the same thing. The reason I don't want to force it in, because we have a little bit of gap uh, to fill at the bottom on each end, and that will fill itself in. We're going to use RTV. I'll explain why later. But I don't want to have it snap in on the edge, because then you have to snap it out, and you can start damaging parts. So I want to avoid that at all costs. So let me go ahead and keep shaving both sides. We'll be back. All right, team. I have it fully torqued down. And I can see a gap in between the tape and the flange. I remember I commented about using RTV versus a gasket. Two reasons. Number one reason is this is not a perfectly flat surface on the pan. You typically want to gasket an area that is machined on both sides. You want to RTV when there's uneven surfaces. The second thing here is we're not done checking our clearance. Obviously, one, rotate your engine. Make sure you're not touching any of your lifters. I already did that. But the second test is to put your intake manifold on here to make sure it's not touching these raised surfaces. That's the other benefit of using RTV is if you use a gasket, that's going to raise this up. Even though it's a 16th to an eighth of an inch, it's still going to raise it up and it might hit your intake manifold. So I'm going to go grab mine and let's see what happens. All right. So I don't have my gaskets on for the intake manifold. All right. So all my holes are lined up. And I think I am hitting that pan. So let's take another look. So I looked underneath. It's actually hitting right on this edge. Right as the intake manifold dips down, it's hitting right on that edge. Can you believe that? Crazy. So I'm going to go ahead and hit it, the, hit it again with the grinder. Here's the fix. I don't know if you can see it, but I added further relief where the intake manifold comes down. And it matches the top. So there's the top of the gasket. There's the bottom of the gasket. This one I extended a little bit further back, but this one matches the top cutouts. Did the same thing. This one closest. You can't see it. Don't worry about it. And uh, let's go try this again, shall we? Take two. Oh yeah, perfect. I can tell right away. Perfect fit. And I intentionally did not put the gasket in there because I, I still want a little bit of clearance in, in everything I work with. So we are good to go with sizing that thing. Next step is paint. So when I go to paint this thing, I am not going to use primer and spray paint. I'm just going to jump to the best stuff I like. That's pour 15. This stuff is going to cure gloss black, hard as a rock impervious to rust it's never going to deteriorate it's going to be awesome and i'm going to lay it down with my hvlp gun high volume low pressure i did a video on that too go check that out 
I called it something totally different in that video, but that video shows exactly how to do it. So when I come back, this is going to be gloss black, and I'll show you the trick for RTVing this thing. All right, you're not losing your mind. I acid etched the top of this before paint, and I wanted to do a final test fit before I paint it, because if I have to do any modifications, I'm going to be pissed if I have paint on here. So what I noticed something is the, the bolts I got from Butler were suddenly getting tight. And I just realized that they're bottoming out in the threaded bore. So I actually have fasteners that are a quarter inch uh, shallower. So they actually work really well. The other thing I noticed is that I can put the rear bolt in really easy. The tough one, the front one was having a tough time. And I realized it's the bottom. So let me take this off. This bolt, this hole is slightly off center towards us. So I had to open up the bottom of this with my deburr tool. The rear hole is actually bigger. So the front one is smaller. So I went ahead and opened it up. So now when I put it on, I don't want to be monkeying with it once the RTV is on there because once you set it in place like that, you really don't want to move it. So I can put the, the back bolt in really easy and the front bolt now fits without me moving it around. And that's what you want before you RTV it. I wanted to test it before I painted it. So hopefully next scene here, it'll be painted. Bam! Gloss black. I love it. Now, frankly, I give this paint job a 5 out of 10. I can see a bunch of debris in the paint. This is actually more air bubbles than anything else. That's my fault. I got some air uh, in, the, in the cup, in the gun. Not a big deal. If this was a top surface of a car, I would sand it down and redo it, reshoot it, color sand, blah, blah, blah. But since we're not going to see much of this, it's not a big deal. Okay, next step, another test fit. So it is bolted down, and now you can clearly see the gaps and go around and look how much RTV you might need in certain places. So I can tell I'm gonna need a little bit more here, a little bit more here. And so you just take a pen and mark on the tape to give you some guidance when we put RTV down. So I know I have to go a little bit thicker in there, not much, just a little bit. Additionally, if you want to do another trick, get some tape and tape off the top side as well. So do it now and go all the way around. So when we do the RTV, I'll show you another trick and we can take the tape off. It'll be a nice, clean line, just like caulking your toilets. So let me finish taping and I'll pull this out, put some RTV down, show you how it's done. When you buy the 3.3 ounce size of the Ultra Black, it comes with this little nozzle. This is the time to use it. All right, here we go. Pay particular attention to the corners because that's where your gasket meets the block. Here we go. I'm just gonna put some thread locker into our studs. I'd rather do it in the hole than have a, a screw with goop all over it. And let's put it in place. I'm also putting RTV on the bottom of the washers. We don't need a vacuum leak on the top. Okay, we're bolted in. The spec is actually three and a half inch pa uh, foot pounds, three and a half foot pounds to that. I don't have it fully tightened down. I'm gonna go around with my flashlight, check for gaps. Now, if you're doing this in your car, just it's okay to take a finger full of RTV and just put it in the back here, because I know you can't see it, but put some more RTV in the back. And most importantly, check this bottom fitting that you have enough RTV down in there. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, show you the next trick. In addition, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this gap with more RTV so we don't so we'll have a nice black edge 
when we're done and it will give us some more assurance that we have good sealing. Okay, I laid another layer down in our crack and this is where the tape comes in handy. So you take your the best cock smoother in the world. Yep, that's your index finger. And just go around the edge and kind of push it in there. All right, this is why we put our tape down. Just like that. So you can go around the whole, I'll take all your tape off while it's still wet and then wipe off anything, any misses, like I have a miss there and we're good. Boo, yeah, check that out. That's why we use tape before our TV. It put, makes a perfect line, perfect edge for that sealant. And you can use the same trick when you cock your toilets. You can even tell your wife it was your idea. I won't tell anyone. <laughs> So my learning lesson here today was when we use shorter fasteners on the valley pan, it pulled the valley pan in a little tighter and I don't think I would have had to modify the edges as much for the intake manifold. So just be cognizant of that. That's what I learned. And if you're wondering, how do you take this out? Get yourself a windshield remover. That will, that's how I took the old one out. That's how you need to take that one out. It makes it really easy. And if you need to source one of these, hit up Butler Performance. There's a link below. They're super helpful. I think this is brilliant because of that baffling. Again, we're going to talk about that at a later episode. Next episode, we're going to do the intake manifold. And it's not this ugly chrome one in the background here. Yeah, I have a surprise for you. I think you're going to like it. So until next time, build them fast, drive them faster. See it.